In 2.4, we were introduced to Yunjin, our first normal attack buffer, and in 4.4, we'll be seeing Shanyun, our first plunging attack buffer. If the pattern continues, we'll have our charge attack buffer all the way in, um... 6.4. Hopefully, it's sooner. I started seeing the idea of a charge attack support all the way around version 3, where Lynette was said to be a dedicated support to Linny's charge attack playstyle. But what we got instead was an Animo sub DPS. While they can still be played together, and believe me, I do, I kinda wish we had that charge attack support from her. In this video, I'll be sharing my concept for this type of unit, including talents, constellations, best builds, and best teams. And to add a little extra bonus from the last character creator video, this one will include a full-on backstory and character profile. I'm an avid writer, so when it comes to stories, I really enjoy making theories and doing literary analyses on the plots. But more importantly, I like writing my own stories, and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to get back into that. Really quickly, I'll be showing my disclaimers in the video for kit concepts. Please be sure to pause and read them if you need to, but if you're good to go, let's start off with my design philosophy. First, as always, I had to consider the element and weapon. We have a lot of characters who are charge attack focused, so I wanted to pick an element that would work well with all of them. When it comes to flexible elements that don't disrupt most team comms, there was either Animo or Geo. I did a lot, and I mean a lot, of back and forth, but I eventually chose to go with Geo because I believe it's ever so slightly more universal than Animo. As for the weapon, I decided to go with a bow user. Some players like to build their favorite units as a main DPS, and I thought making her a bow user would allow them to utilize her charge attack buffs efficiently. For the rarity, I'm choosing to make her a 4 star. While we have amazing 5 star support units, I've noticed that most of them feel more universal. A charge attack buffer feels a lot more niche, and as such, would fit a 4 star rarity more. We'll get into her story a bit later on, but for a general introduction, meet Summer, a violinist from Fontaine. Her side title is Song Without Sight, and her constellation is Nebulo Cordis, which roughly means Mist of Strings. This was taken from Google Translate. I don't have any experience in the Latin language, so please correct me in the comments if there's a better translation. Now, we can look at her talents and passive abilities. Summer's normal attacks consist of a 5-hit combo, which deal physical damage to opponents. When setting up a charge attack, she can deal a more powerful aim shot, which deals physical damage. A fully charged aim shot will infuse the bow with Geo, dealing Geo damage. When using a plunging attack, Summer will strike the ground with a barrage of arrows, dealing AoE physical damage. Alright, that's the basic stuff out of the way. Let's move on to the fun stuff. When Summer uses her elemental skill, she will deal AoE Geo damage and summon a sturdy sound barrier. This barrier's health scales with Summer's current defense and will absorb all physical and elemental damage at 150% damage absorption. When the shield is created, a Spirit Breath Thorn dealing Numa aligned Geo damage will be generated. Multiple uses of this skill can stack the health, up to a maximum amount based on her defense. The cooldown for this ability is 16 seconds, while the duration of the shield lasts 9 seconds. Her Numa hit can be triggered once every 10 seconds. Hitting an opponent upon casting will generate 4 Geo particles. I decided that another way this character could synergize with charge attack users was if they were a shielder since most of them need interruption resistance to avoid stagger. For Summer's elemental bursts, she gathers the might of sound and generates an orchestral sound box, which follows the active character and fires a note block shot every 2 seconds to nearby opponents, dealing geo damage. This will retain itself even if Summer leaves the field. Let's talk more about the note block shots. When note block shots hit, all party members gain the symphonic effect for a set time. This effect boosts their charge attack damage percent. Note block shots will not stack the effect upon multiple hits, but will instead refresh its duration. These shots will also refresh Summer's shield by a small percentage of her current defense. The burst cost is going to be 70, with an 18 second cooldown. The duration of the ability is 15 seconds, and the duration of the symphonic effect is 6 seconds, but 100% uptime should be possible because the note block shots fire once every 2 seconds. I figure the burst should stay relatively simple. Activate your burst, deal some geo damage, and give your team a buff. Just to clarify, this damage bonus is a damage percent bonus. In addition, the burst allows you to maintain uptime on your shield and even refresh its health so that it remains strong over time. Her A1 is a small bonus that further boosts the team's DPS. When the active character deals charge attack damage, they gain a 4% crit damage bonus for 15 seconds. This effect can stack up to 4 times and can be triggered once every 0.1 seconds. This serves to be an extra bonus to their damage, but what I think is really cool is how each character stacks up these crit damage bonuses at different rates. 0.1 seconds is a very forgiving cooldown after all. 
For example, every Ganyu charge shot gives 2 stacks. Linny's hits the same at 2. Nouvellet hits once every 0.5 seconds, meaning that by the end of his first stream he already has max stacks. And Tainari is a bit of an iffy conclusion, since there's a chance his secondary arrows can hit at once, but if they all hit at different rates, he can gain the full bonus after one charge shot. The window before stacks are lost is also very forgiving, so unless your rotation itself takes over 15 seconds, uptime should be no problem. Keep in mind this bonus is universal, not just charge attack focused. So if a character has damage in their skill or burst, then that also gets buffed by the crit damage bonus. For her A4 passive, we look at supporting charge attack users in a new way. While a party member is protected by the sturdy shield barrier and is under the symphonic effect, they will gain the following buffs based on their weapon type. If they're a sword and polearm user, their normal and charge attack speed is increased by 20%. If they're a claymore user, their normal and charge attack speed is increased by 25%. If they're a catalyst user, their normal and charge attack speed is increased by 15%. And if they're a bow user, it decreases the time it takes to charge an aim shot by 0.5 seconds. This passive is very dependent on which character is your main carry. Sword and polearm users don't really have a charge attack playstyle, so you won't see them make use of the passive too often but I still wanted to give them some kind of bonus so that they wouldn't be excluded. Claymores have their continuous attack, so they'll have much better uptime. I decided to give them a faster charge attack speed to make up for the longer hit lag. Catalyst users gain a shorter attack speed buff because they don't have any hit lag, but since many Catalyst users have a combo, the normal attack speed combined with the charge attack should make their entire attack string faster. Finally, bow users will have a shorter time to charge. It takes around 2 seconds to charge normally, so this would decrease that time to around 1.5 seconds. The calculation occurs similarly to a damage calculation, where any passives that decrease charge time by a percentage go after the flat value. For example, Sara has a passive that decreases her charge time by 80%. At 2 seconds, that means the new value is 0.4 seconds. Summer's A4 would subtract the charge time first, and then Sara's passive decreases that new value by 80%. So that's 2 minus 0.5, so 1.5, and 1.5 decreased by 80%, which is 0.3 seconds. This is just an example to explain the mathematical formula. With her base kit out of the way, let's take a look at her constellations. At C1, when note block shots hit opponents, they will increase the party's shield strength by 4%. This effect can stack up to 6 times. In addition to refreshing the shield's health, the constellation now allows you to boost your team's shield strength and effectively make the shield tankier. For C2, when the active character is protected by a sturdy sound barrier and affected by the symphonic effect, their charge attack damage will ignore 30% of the enemy's defense. This effectively gives the main DPS an even larger damage ceiling. It's pretty easy to have the shield and burst active at the same time, so the effect is almost always active. Originally, Summer was going to be an animal unit and was therefore able to make use of the VV set. But since she couldn't decrease the resistance of Animo, Geo, and Dendro teams effectively, there was a weaker incentive to use her as an animal unit. So when I swapped her to Geo, I opted to add a constellation that added the same debuff regardless of the element. C3 increases the level of her elemental skill by 3. This constellation improves her shielding capabilities. That's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple upgrade, but it does play well into her C4. C4 states that when a character is protected by a sturdy sound barrier, their charge attack damage is increased by 6% of the shield's current health. If you've seen episode 6 of my signature weapon episode, this concept should ring a bell. I used the same idea from Toma's weapon and made it a constellation for Summer. Because the shield's health is being constantly refreshed, it should be able to maintain the same value instead of decreasing over time. C5 increases Summer's burst level by 3. You'll see a nice boost to her personal damage with this constellation, the talent scales the charge attack bonus, so that would also get increased with this constellation. And her shield refreshing mechanic will also be buffed here. At C6, Summer's fully charged aim shots are increased based on 350% of her current defense. Her skill and burst damage will also be increased by 110% of her current defense. Additionally, Summer's note block shots will gain the same damage percent bonus that Symphonic provides to charge attacks. Let's break down all of these effects. Her charge attacks are increased based on a large amount of her defense. Very good if you want to play her as an on-fielder. Her burst damage is increased based on a smaller amount of her defense. Very good for an off-field DPS role. Her defense scaling shields were the main part of her kit, but now, that stat improves almost all of her main damage sources. The second part is that her charge attack bonus from her burst will also apply to her burst damage. This helps substitute a geo damage goblet so you can build more defense for a tankier shield. Overall, this constellation is a very good DPS increase but it's not necessary to make Summer's supportive capabilities viable. 
With constellations out of the way, let's talk about her artifacts. Summer has two distinct playstyles. You can choose to use her as a shield support, but if you're the kind that likes to turn people into DPS units instead, she can do that too. Let's start off with a simple support build. Her stats are pretty straightforward. Defense on the Goblet and Circlet is your best option. For the Sands, you can choose either Defense or ER based on your energy needs. For a main DPS build, a classic Attack, Geo Damage, Crit build will be best pre-C6. At C6, her damage will scale much better into Defense, so using that Sands would be better. If you're looking to build her as an off-field damage dealer instead of on-field, you may need to run ER to burst on cooldown. Her best set as a shield support will be the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams. The effects give her a total of 54% defense bonus, and at later constellations, the 24% geo damage bonus becomes a lot more viable. For a main DPS build, you also have a few more options. Husk will still be the best, but Nighttime Whispers is also a great option in crystallized comms. And if you have Farina, Maro Chassé takes the cake. For off-field damage only, a full emblem set will be a good alternative since her main damage source will be from her burst. Here is a list of two-piece options for lower investment. For Summer's best weapons, it will once again be based around her build. For support, energy recharge bows will be the best. These include Favonius for the extra particle generation, or Sacrificial for the skill cooldown reset. A 5-star option is Elegy, as long as you have a teammate to help enable Crystallize. For a main DPS choice, any sort of crit stat stick will work at any constellation. I believe Scion will be her best 4-star option. For 5 stars, this is very dependent on her team, since 1st grade magic works best in Mono Geo, while something like Skyward Harp is great overall. As usual, I'll be sharing a weapon concept for Summer, and this will be a 4 star weapon since it's a 4 star unit. Even though main DPS is an option, I believe she's more suited as a support, so this weapon focuses on her support capabilities. Silent Melody is the weapon name, with a base attack of 454 and a defense subset of 69%. Its passive, Shimmers in the Fog, will grant the user 2-4 energy whenever any party member deals charge attack damage. This effect can be triggered once every 1.5 seconds. Additionally, when the user deals elemental damage, increase the party's charge attack crit rate by 2-4% for 6 seconds. This effect can stack up to 5 times and can be triggered while off-field. This weapon focuses on improving Summer's ER requirements. Combined with enough ER subsets, the player no longer needs to run in ER Sands. She also boosts crit rate for her team just to add a little extra team damage. Let's move on to her team comps. The idea with Summer is that Zhongli will be a better option as a general support, but Summer's niche in charge attack teams will provide enough bonuses to give her the upper hand in comparison. She'll mainly be the best option because of the charge attack bonuses and attack speed buffs. I'll be going down the list of every element and the best options for those teams. Let's start off with the basic physical teams. Many physical damage dealers are normal attack focused, but if you're the kind of person who likes running those teams, Summer is great. Naturally, you want a Cryo and Electro for Superconduct, and Bloodstained Chivalry may actually be an exceptionally good choice due to the fact that it synergizes perfectly, but there isn't much else to say about this. For Pyro teams, we can look at Klee and Yenfei teams with either Mono Pyro, Vaporize, or Melt Comps. Both of them string in normal attacks a lot, so they won't always be dealing the buff charge attack damage, but when they do, it'll have a higher value. Linny, however, will be our best option for Pyro charge attacks. Even better is that in a mono pyro team, you don't have to worry about the shorter charge time affecting any sort of ICD mechanics. Just shoot and kill. Our best hydro charge attack user is Nouvellet, naturally. Summer can contribute to his A1 passive through Crystallize, which can further boost his damage. In cryo, Ganyu is my top choice. You may lose out on an Animo Swirl, but it's a good alternative if you need the defensive utility. Electro doesn't really have any dedicated charge attack users. In a similar sense to physical, you have the option, and I can see something like Kuching Charge Spamming or a main DPS Fischl. Use Dendro with these units to maximize damage via Quicken. Dendro gives the crown to Tainari in a spread team. You can give Summer the 4-piece Deepwood set, and it'll decrease the Dendro resistance even further. For Animo, a Hyper Carry Wanderer Spam Charge is where you'd slot in Summer. Finally, for Geo, Mono Geo teams will be a viable option because of Summer's defense scaling. Just slot her in with your DPS and Goro, and you're good to go. A lot of Ito's damage is based around charge attacks, so you can use her here. Ningguang also has charge attack damage, but the main thing is that her damage is spread out among her entire kit, not just charge attacks. Noelle also works since she can deal continuous charge attack damage with her spin. If you want to use Summer as a main DPS, I once again recommend a triple Geocomp to boost a team's damage, since Goro will provide the most possible bonuses. The last slot can be a flex slot for any sort of support unit like Mona or Fischl. Is that everything gameplay-wise? I guess it is. Next up is the part I was most excited about, the backstory. Before we begin, I want to state a few extra disclaimers and messages regarding this section. One, you are free to draw and post any fan art of my OCs if you want. 
I don't have an official design at the moment, but if I ever make one, please don't let that stop you from designing your own interpretations. If you want me to see your art, feel free to tag me on any of my social media accounts, links in the bio. Just note that I'm most active on Twitter and Reddit. Number 2. I set limits on the character's involvement in the plot and other characters. You won't find me involving them in major story plots because I want to make sure the spotlight is on the canon characters. And number two, I won't be romantically shipping them with other characters, and this is for obvious reasons. Number three, at the end of the day, I put a lot of effort into writing these characters. Don't try to take credit for my stories, and please do not be disrespectful. I don't mind if you want to share any headcans you have about my character, but don't be one of those weirdos who tries to fix my character because you don't like how they're written. Those are all the important disclaimers. But without further ado, let's begin with Act 1. Summer's story begins in the city of Poisson. Her parents were residents that lived there for some time, and little Summer loved to express herself through her drawings. The colors of flowers, the textures of the clouds, and the various shapes of the mountains were displayed beautifully on her crumpled sheets of paper. But early in her childhood, Summer was diagnosed with a condition that caused her vision to slowly deteriorate over time. Her family moved to the Court of Fontaine, where she could receive better medical attention. This, of course, did nothing to help her. At age 5, she was already wearing glasses to help with her visual impairment, but by age 10, she had gone completely blind. Summer struggled to live with her blindness. Simple tasks such as walking around were nearly impossible to achieve. Still, she eventually learned how to use a walking stick. After a bit of practice, her father asked her, How does it feel? Summer took a few steps forward, making her way from one end of the room to the other without tripping or bumping into obstacles. She let out a small smile. It was perfect. One day, when she was strolling along the court, she heard the sound of a violinist playing a sweet melody. The notes enveloped her, and she found herself sitting on a nearby bench for hours, just listening to the street performance. When the violinist finished, she approached the blind girl and they began chatting about violins, music, and sound as a whole. Then the lady said something that stumped Summer. Would you be interested in learning how to play? Summer was confused. How could I possibly learn to do that with my blindness? The violinist chuckled. For almost all of these songs, I was playing with my eyes closed. With enough practice, you don't need to see in order to play. I'd be happy to teach you if you'd like. On their first lesson, the violinist gave Summer a worn-down violin to practice on. I'm terribly sorry, but this is the only one that matches your size. But the little girl just smiled. It was perfect. Years went by as the two ladies practiced on the violin. It was a struggle at first, but Summer learned how to feel the instrument and understand how to play it. There, she reached a point where she felt comfortable enough to play on a stage, and her teacher booked a small gig for her at the Hotel de Board. But a week before the recital... She mysteriously disappeared without a trace. On the day of her first performance, Summer was overwhelmed with emotion. The despair of losing her teacher, the anxiety of the audience judging her. When she stepped on the stage, whispers could be heard throughout the crowd. Oh dear, she's blind? How good could she actually be? Summer took a deep breath and held the violin firmly against her chin. The first set of notes she strung out brought those hecklers to a halt, and she captivated the audience through her music. No one dared to speak as she performed, and by the end of it, waves of applause and cheers echoed throughout the building. When she exited the stage, she noticed the weight of her violin had shifted. Feeling around, she grabbed a round object that had been hanging off the top. Though she couldn't yet see the object, she knew what she had been given. Her parents were waiting in the back, gleefully hugging her and praising her for being granted a vision. Summer said cheerfully, How did you like the performance? Both of her parents looked at her and smiled. With tears in her eyes, Summer's mother kissed her forehead. It was perfect. Summer has connections with a variety of Fontaine's most well-known citizens. Charlotte naturally did a feature on her, with the main message being how many disabilities don't have to be a hindrance when pursuing your dreams. This article was one of her most inspirational pieces, and Summer was happy to have contributed to this. Having lost her sight, Summer's other senses were slightly heightened. Being from Poisson, she knows and looks up to the demoiselle, Navia. When she visits, Navia quickly prepares a bunch of her macarons, and they play a game where Summer tries to taste and guess all the special ingredients Navia put in her snacks. A famous perfume saleswoman named Emily naturally caught Summer's attention. Because she can't know whether or not she looks nice, she can at least make sure she smells nice. 
but even if she can't fully grasp the fashion trends of Fontaine, she still enjoys shopping at Chioria Boutique and finding outfits with a nice texture. Chiori herself tailored a couple outfits for Summer, making sure they were as comfortable as could be. And even if Summer couldn't see it, her outfits were one of the most dazzling ones to ever grace the court of Fontaine. Of course, Summer's skills on the violin have provided her with the opportunity to perform at the Opera Epicles. The Udex himself has witnessed many of her recitals, and though she is no longer the Archon, one may also catch Farina reserving a seat to enjoy the performance as well. Her rise to fame hasn't stopped there. She was also invited to participate in the Iridescence Tour, the international music tour that performs all over Tevat. Who knows what kind of musician she'll meet along the way. So that's Summer's story. One of the biggest inspirations I took when making this character was Toph from Avatar, who was someone born blind but still just as capable as any other person. One of her abilities is being able to use her earthbending to feel the vibrations and quote unquote see. Summer has a similar ability. After obtaining a vision, she gained extremely limited vision that occurs through sound and vibration. It's abstract explaining the concept, but I'll try to explain it as best as I can. Imagine the world is a blank canvas, but your immediate surroundings become basic outlines. You can effectively see the shape of your surroundings, but every other detail is out of reach. That's how Summer's new sight works. Because she can envision outlines of things, she can walk around without the need of a walking stick. But she can't see color or make out words, so it's not like her blindness is completely cured. This type of outline-based vision is how we explain her in-game animations. More likely than not, Genshin would not have special animations just for a character like her. So I figured I would have a lore reason as to why she's able to move around and fight like any other unit. Alright, I think it's finally time to bring my little performance to a close. As I've said before, story writing is a very big passion of mine, and I'm very happy to have found a way to incorporate that into these videos. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel. Please give me your feedback and comment down below what aspects of her gameplay kit you like and what you'd consider changing. Same for the story, what parts did you enjoy and what could be improved? And as a final question, would you rather prefer the gameplay and story sections be in the same video, or would you rather I separate the two? Thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!